Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming, and did you know it is time to watch some more anime, to watch some free run, um, where we've sort of finally had our first taste of like an action scene, like right, like a real, like a, an actual fight, an actual battle between between characters, and much to my delight, even though it was very high intensity, even though there was a lot of shit going on, it still, it didn't break the tone of the show. It was still like... It was still within this thing of like, this is not so much free run. Um, oh God, an ancient enemy has returned from the dead. And now the, there was no crisis. This is cleanup. <laughs> um, this was like, like this was, this was just free run taking care of something. Like, like you take care of an old dish uh, that you left out in the kitchen without, you know, with, without doing the dishes for a while. It still had that sense of free run, not not so much like fighting an old enemy, but like like revisiting an old memory, right? Like that that the that the boss monster was not so much an a, an opponent as it was a memory of something that happened long ago, sort of made flesh, which is cool. Like managing that narratively, that's that's a cool way to do things. Once again, curious to see how the show will change the handling of that as it proceeds, because not every opponent they're going to fight, one assumes, is going to have some direct connection to Freerun's past, although maybe they will. Who knows? I guess we're about to find out. Anyway, this is an anime watch-along, which means there's a timer in the top left corner of the screen, which tells you where we are in the episode, and I will set the timer to zero, and I'm going to say three, two, one, go and then we're gonna go and then the lovely little screenshot in the background is gonna get replaced by a piece of anime key art uh because i don't want to get assassinated by copyright lawyers but then i'll say three two one pause and then you'll get a screenshot of whatever i am looking at at the current time and then i'll talk about whatever it is that i'm looking at at the current time and we'll discuss it together well we won't discuss i'll discuss it at you is what's gonna happen because of we don't i i'm not on a discord call with you uh at the moment, but it's going to be like you have a, a guy sitting next to you on the couch who gets unreasonably excited about buildings um, and small animation touches sort of rambling on about, about the stuff he sees that's cool um, in an anime. And yeah, and when I'm done saying stuff over a screenshot, I'll say three, two, one, unpause, and then we'll keep watching together and we'll try and stay in sync in that way. So without any further ado, three, two, one, go. There's a little touch of Freerun. Her eyes are green for the most part, right? But there's that touch of red that shows up sometimes, which is, like, really distinctive and interesting. Oh, yeah, also, I forgot to... I think I forgot to elaborate on this in the, in the previous thing. But the, the flower ornaments in, in Fern's hair... Or the the flower, the butterfly ornament. It's like, oh shit, that was because the she cast a butterfly spell, and that was one of her precious memories. So like, like, so Freerin made exactly the right choice. Actually, a thing that that is, the butterfly seems to be associated with Fern as a character. Which again, like butterflies, that whole thing about caterpillar cocoon blossoming into a beautiful butterfly kind of thing, um, matches very well with her like thing about this journey is about her growing up and blossoming into herself, <clears throat> kind of vibe. Um, that I quite enjoy. Again, the background design. And the buildings. God.
It's what Himmel would have done. <laughs> Himmel, by the way, means heaven in German. Or sky, more specifically. Which I'm wondering, because free rain is often shot framed against the sky. Like, a lot of the shots of free rain as a character, like, emphasize the sky in the background, and a lot of the shots in the anime generally emphasize the sky. And I wonder if that's an intentional thing. Himmel. Himmel also means the sky in uh, Danish, by the way. It's Germanic. Gorgeous buildings. I think that door might have been 3D animated. <laughs> it's another good detail. It's another good detail that Freeran is a late sleeper and really messy. <laughs> Clearly stayed up reading all night. Again, they're hand animating these things tumbling end over end. Ah. These fucking animators. <laughs> yes. Listen, if I was going to be alive for a thousand years, I would never get up early in the morning. Just the little flexes. <laughs> oh, they're hand animating that fucking blurry ship floating in the foreground, rotating around itself. Ah! God damn it. Do you have any idea how complex an object a fucking ship is to animate in motion? Do you have any idea? Do you have even the slightest idea how complex it can be? Uh, it's the little flexes. Like, it's not the fucking big, brash, open, obvious sucker guides. Ah. Uh.
One critique I do have. Three, two, one. Pause. One critique I do have of the show, and it's that like so far, and the way it handles character design, it isn't that good at drawing elderly people. Um, it really is like that. Is that that's supposed to be like an old old man? I suppose in the same way like the, the, the kid in the village who grew up to be an old, old man in the same way that, that Himmel was supposed to look really old when he was bald and stuff. I, I would say not really. Uh, like, that's, there are more lines and uh, like more, you know, changes to an elderly person's face than just, oh, hey, they have one line on their cheek. Um, that's one. That's one place where it's like... And this is like, it is using sort of very standard anime visual language for old person. It's like, it's understandable in that sense, but it really could have. I, I, this is one place where I'll criticize. It's like, no, like th there are physical changes that happen to elderly people that you can replicate even within something that is very stylized um, and kind of flat styled, like. There are things you can do there. And, like, that might come back to the manga. Like, it might be that the manga... Because like, I remember seeing Himmel in the... in like, read, like, the first couple of chapters of the manga way back when, where Himmel looked basically like he does in the anime, right? Like, he also there does not look very much like an old man. Um, just in terms of the way... He's way too smooth, generally. Like, old people in this anime are way too smooth in the way that they're rendered. Um, which is not what aging looks like in a person. Um, and that is actually a bit of a flaw in a series that is very concerned with this... Like, this... This thing about, like, you grow up, you change. Like, you become a different person as you age. And the ways in which you can become recognize unrecognizable to your former self, right? Like, where I think the the, the contrast between Himmel um, in his, in his like, youthful form who Friedrin remembers and Himmel, the old man who dies, like, that would have been a stronger narrative moment if he had actually fucking looked old. Um, like, if you'd actually seen the the like, the wrinkling of the skin and the liver spots and, like, the way that the veins can sort of start to protrude and, like, the way that, like, because um, the nose and the ears keep growing uh, basically for our entire lives. And so when you get older, you tend to have a bigger nose. You tend to have bigger ears. Um, like, there are things, there are actual, like, specific design things you can do to show aging um, that this show kind of just doesn't do, which, bit of a pity. Little, little... Tiny bit disappointing. Um, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <coughs> hey. Little disappointing when so much of so much of the rest of it is such high quality. But it's a general anime industry thing, and it might be that that's just how they were drawn in the manga, and the production of the anime is staying close to that, which, you know, fair enough, I suppose. It's just, when the, when the show is so much about that specific thing, it would have been interesting if it had taken a more elaborate visual interest in the visual signifiers of aging rather than just fern gets bigger um but you know yeah anyway does, not not a substantive crit not a big criticism but just a small thing that 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 is bugging me a bit three two one unpause Him a little fucking note. Thanks for just reading her completely, which is lovely.
That's because you're smiling. Ta da! <laughs> it's not about the thing, it's about the sharing of the thing. That is an emotionally incredibly salient point, by the way. Um, three, two, one, pause. That's Emotionally, that's an incredibly salient point. And actually a good lesson to learn is that like, going somewhere and doing something with someone is... It's not just about the thing itself. It's about the sharing of the thing, right? Like, that's how we make memories. Um, that's, that's, like would make the significant and certainly I know myself as a younger man quite an antisocial type me for many complex and varied reasons but I I often had trouble with like hey you want to go for a walk why like where are we going somewhere no we're just going for a walk uh, I mean I and the honest answer was no I'd rather stay home and play a video game frankly like or write or draw or like do something that that has some kind of form function and purpose um but, you know, <laughs> now that I am older, I'm kind of looking back at myself with a bit of regret there because there were a lot of walks that I could have gone on with people. And just, like, time spent being around and with people that I... opportunities that I didn't take. Because I didn't know that's what they were for. That they weren't for the thing itself, but they were for the sharing of the thing. For just being in one another's presence. And, you know, paying attention to a thing together. And, like, that that thing, like, this is relationship advice from an aromantic guy. Um, in any relationship, whether it's romantic or not, frankly, if you want to deepen that relationship, pay attention to the same thing together. Doesn't matter what it is. Painting, anime, uh, video game, bit of lint on the carpet, doesn't matter. Pay attention to the same thing together. Trust me on this. Anyway, three... Two, one, unpause. See, that's... That's an interesting picture of faith. I would say that that kind of belief should be supported with working hard to make the world we're already living in better, not just praying for a better afterlife, but, you know... I'm here to hang out. Because we wrote to each other. <laughs> Eisen is interesting.
<laughs> oh, Flammy the Legendary Mage comes back. I want to see him without his helmet at least once. Okay, three, two, one, pause. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hop back a little bit to the frame where he's lifting the boulder. Cause first of all, that's a great shot. Um second of all, he's an, that's an interesting take on a dwarf, in a sense, because like the first time I saw his character design, I thought, what the fuck? like what? Really? Oh no, okay. Like with the like the bowl cut sort of horned helmet and the shoulder pieces. And like it's a, and like the very very long beard kind of thing that sort of completely occludes his face. That was like, <laughs> it's like oh okay that mm, uh, it it felt like a very sort of juvenile character design. I think I am starting to see a point to it though, because that's one of the things like he's a dwarf right, so he lives a lot longer than humans. Um, and because there is that little one... Okay, we're at 1438. Let me see if we can go back and find this. Uh, there. This transition, right? From young Eisen to old Eisen, right? Where... Yes, he hasn't changed, right? Like, he... So much of him remains exactly the same as it was... But the devil is in the details. Like, actually, going back to the thing we talked about, like, in terms of, of how this the show handles aging through character design and, and how I wish it would do more, um, where you can see, like, all of the equipment, like, has been burnished and, and broken up a little bit. He's no longer wearing the bracers. Like, his hands, um, his hands look different. And, like... And that's, again, the thing wh which I would wish the show would do would be, like, to do more with skin texture and, like, do more with, with the physicality of the body just beyond old means you have crow's feet, right? Like, old means you have a few wrinkles under your eye. Um, but I think maybe with Eisen that's kind of part of the point a little bit, that there is this thing of, like, he seems in some ways as unchanging as Freerun. But then we're like, because he's covered up so much, he's covered up by his hair, he's covered up by his beard, he's covered up by his helmet, he's covered up by his, like, his cloak and stuff, like, that very much obscures most of his form, his body, most of the time. And then, like, sort of, like, maybe there's a point being made here about, like, like internal versus external change, which is something that Freerun is very much about, it seems. Let's see, 1438, let me just get to the timestamp. Eight bonk. Oh, and while we're here, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna give a little shout out to this lizard. Wow! <laughs> like the after images as it's dashing around in a panic. I just thought that was incredibly charming and fun. Um, but anyway, back to where we were. Three, two, one. Unpause. And she makes the grape sour for him.
Was that motherfucker just running on water? God, there's a bunch of Sakoka going into these incidental shots. I like the voice performance of Aizen. Like this very level. Oh, Flamme was her master. Flamme means flame. Reading her for filth. <laughs> oh, the lighting. Oh my god. They hand animated that. Fuck you. Oh, son of a bitch. They hand animated the tree doing that. <laughs> no, she just knew you. Oh, is that where? Is that the goal of the journey? End, end, right. The end. Oh. Bloodborne. <laughs> no, just gothic architecture. Hehehe. <laughs>
Oh, so the literal go. <laughs> okay, yeah, she all right. He's also fallen asleep. <laughs> ah, okay. No, she is, Fern. Come on. <laughs> that's not that's not <laughs> three two one pause i <laughs> that should be the tagline for the show <laughs> Free. <laughs> That's not how relationships work. <laughs> I need to screenshot that. <laughs> That's fucking comedy gold. <laughs> it's like looking at her like, "That's not how that works." Because <laughs> it's the truth. Like it's the. That's the tension of free run, right? Like she. Being so long lived and having been alive for so long already, clearly, um, she's sort of. That's the growth for her, right? Is that Freeran, right up until the moment Himmel goes, thinks that she knows the world and knows herself. Right? Like she thinks, like, she thinks she has learned, she knows all the stuff that's, that's worth knowing here. And she returns to. Like, her ground state of being, her idleness. And is an inactive participant in the world, right? And that, then that has a consequence, exactly as her master predicted, right? That, hey, someday, someday you're going to make a mistake and you're going to come here. Because, you know, I know you. <laughs> I see how you think about things and I know where that's going to go, so... Right, and it's it, Freeran has this thing of like, well, I mean, if it's going to end anyway, that that's exactly what she says. Is like, even if I teach them, well, they, they'll die from my perspective in no time. So why, like, it is it is, and that again, this is this thing about like examining something which is fundamentally human through the lens of fantasy, which is that, like, just because it ends doesn't mean it's not important, right? Just because it is brief. And, like, that's the thing about, like, yeah, you were only with them for ten years, but if you'd been with them for a thousand, it still wouldn't have been enough, right? Like, there is no such thing as enough. 
if if your thing is like, well, I, I teach them, then they live for a hundred years, then they die. That seems like a that's not worth my time, is it? Surely. Um, except, yeah, it is. Because those hundred years, that brief period, can be worth more than all the gold in the world. It can be worth everything. As indeed, the show, it, that's what the show is about, is that those ten years, no, actually, those ten years turned to be worth, turned out to be worth a thousand, right? They turned out to be worth a lifetime, however long that may be. That's why she's going on this journey. That's why she's, like, traveling around trying to revisit these places. Because those ten years fucking mattered in the end, even though it was only ten. Even though two of her companions died, those ten years fucking mattered. And it's the same thing with, the, like, on a more human time scale. If it's, like, if it's a brief friendship, it still matters. If it's a brief love, it still matters. Like, the things that end are still important, even if they end too soon, which all of them do. <laughs> Freeran, that's not how relationships work. <laughs> Boom, roasted. I accurately called her out there. Anyway, three, two, one, unpause. I love his gesture of pulling at his mustache. It seems so personal specific to him. I guess at some point we have to discuss Dragon Quest in the context of of this show. As indeed we have to discuss it in the context of all fantasy. Modern high fantasy, anyway. Because, mm -hmm. like, Dragon Quest and... and like the like you know the the premise of every fantasy anime right like like oh the demon king is attacking the fantasy kingdom and the hero like the hero being such a specific archetype of like the hero and his party is going to defeat the demon king um a lot and i do mean a lot of that aesthetically and in terms of, of the composition of the tropes with which it's put together, has a direct lineage right back to Dragon Quest. Um, which, you know, alongside Final Fantasy, is, is one of the biggest RPG franchises um, in Japan. Like, incredibly, massively influential, including on the character design, which is like, where, like, it's not that, <clears throat> it's not that the free ring character designs, like the, the Heroes Party, is not diverging and being unique in its own way but like you can clearly see where it draws a lot of its archetypes and tropes like especially like about having a priest having a, a hero having a warrior having a mage like all of that that is very much drawn from the legacy of things like dragon quest especially um and like of course dragon quest itself draws from like extant fantasy narratives and like indeed from like like japanese folklore and like all kinds of different things a lot more, it's not just, oh, everything goes back to Dragon Quest and Dragon Quest is the only source, so much as it's that, like, everything goes back 
to plenty of things, like plenty of inspirations uh, tie into Free Run. Free Run isn't just like drawn from Dragon Quest. Plenty of inspirations tie into it, but Dragon Quest looms large in the same way that Lord of the Rings looms very large over all modern fantasy, right? Like it's a lot, like you can kind of read all modern fantasy as like, uh, and I'm speaking specifically like sword and sorcery high fantasy as either a reaction, like as, as a, as a version of a Lord of the Rings narrative or as an attempt to react to or react against Lord of the Rings as this, like, large looming thing that just hovers over the legacy of the entire genre, right? And that's not in the sense that all fantasy must be read in the context of Lord of the Rings, but in the, in the, in the context of, like, if there is an elf... Yeah, sorry, like, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna have to deal with the, like, you have to deal with, is this a Tolkien elf? Or are you drawing from something else? Because those are the options, right? Like, it's like... And and Freerun, specifically, is very much a Tolkien elf in the way of, like, being, like, long-lived, um, sort of, like, attuned with magic, dispassionate, and sort of, like, a little bit... seemingly a little bit cold towards mortality. That's all Tolkien elf shit, right? And Tolkien's elves, in turn, also had, like... And Tolkien's fantasy had a big inspiration on Dragon Quest. Like, so yeah, you can draw all of these lines, but Dragon Quest especially looms large as a source of visual inspiration for most fantasy anime, right? Um, like, high fantasy anime, specifically. Um, and I should really... I Because ha I haven't played that many Dragon Quest games myself. It's actually kind of a hole in my knowledge. I should probably... Maybe I should have a project someday on the on the Let's Play channel to play all the Dragon Quest games. Must be possible, right? Like, surely. Anyway, that's that's a consideration for an entirely different YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sort of I'm just sort of musing out loud, cause yeah, huh? Thinking. But anyway, that's again for a different time. God damn it! I need to get on medication for that fucking ADHD. I yeah I mm, I will very much want to watch more free run right now, but I actually do have other things I need to do. So I'm gonna tear myself away from this fucking anime for a second, and go do other things like work, uh, more productive work than than this. And I'll see you back here for more free run later. Bye. <laughs>